Hello, this is your special education virtual content specialist with the 8th grade math lesson for May 21st. This lesson, like all other lessons, can be found on Teach Hub, and all lessons provide the title, the focus question, and the learning objectives, including the standards and objectives for each lesson. Additionally, we provide guidance for using this resource, including instructional and technology guidance, implementation guidance for the lesson, guidance for summarizing, guidance for assessment during instruction, and general methods of engaging with students with disabilities and multilingual learners. Eighth graders are going to continue working on Unit 8, the Pythagorean Theorem, and Irrational Numbers. Day 18, the Converse Part B. How can we use the Pythagorean Theorem to determine if a triangle is a right triangle? For the launch, students are going to look at three different triangles with their measurements listed out. In order to help students with disabilities who may be overwhelmed with too much information on one slide, I put each triangle on their own separate slide. Additionally, I made a little checklist that way they can quickly identify what type of triangle it is and a little line next to right and obtuse. That way they can identify which side length is the one that is opposite the right or obtuse angle. So students should realize that this triangle in particular is obtuse since 8 squared plus 15 squared is less than 20 squared. And because it is obtuse, the side length of 20 is the one that's opposite of the obtuse angle. For triangle Y, it is an acute triangle since 8 squared plus 13 squared is greater than 15 squared. And triangle Z is a right triangle since 8 squared plus 15 squared is exactly 17 squared. And the side of the length 17 is the one that's opposite the right angle. For the explore, you can label each slide as an I do, we do, you do. This slide in particular is the I do. Given the information provided for the right triangle shown here, find the unknown leg lengths to the nearest tenth. So for the first triangle, a squared plus 2 squared is equal to 7 squared, which means that a squared is equal to 49 minus 4, which is equal to 45. So a is the square root of 45. For the second triangle, x squared plus x squared equals 4 squared, which means 2x squared is equal to 16, which means that x squared is equal to 8. And when you do the square root on both sides, x is equal to the square root of 8. For the we do, the triangle shown here is not a right triangle. What are two different ways you can change one of the values so it would be a right triangle? Sketch these new triangles and clearly label the right angle. So a sample response from your students could be that if 4 and 6 were the legs of the right triangle, that means the hypotenuse would have to be equal to 4 squared plus 6 squared equals c squared. And when you calculate that, you get c squared is equal to 52, and the square root of c is equal to the square root of 52. 
So you would get that C is approximately equal to 7.2 units. For the you do, students are asked, is this a right triangle? How do you know? And the answer is yes, because if students do 8 squared plus 15 squared equals 17 squared, they will get 64 plus 225 equals 289, and when they add 64 and 225 together, they get 289 equals 289. So the statement is true, and it is a right triangle. Students can summarize by responding to the focus question, how can we use the Pythagorean theorem to determine if a triangle is a right triangle? You can support students with disabilities by giving them a sentence starter so they can focus on the content of their answer rather than the sentence structure, and then they can complete the cool down. For additional practice, students can complete R.6 on 8th grade IXL, converse of the Pythagorean theorem, is it a right triangle? Additionally, they can complete 8th grade Module 3, Lesson 14, Problem Set on Engaged New York. These lessons were created utilizing illustrative mathematics and open up resources, so please feel free to visit to support your students with digital learning. If you have any questions, please reach out to a virtual content specialist. Thank you!